Hi guys, welcome to the next video of Stuff 2 tutorial series. In this video, we will talk about action classes and what are different ways of writing action classes. And we will decide which way is effective and helpful to us. Now one thing which we already have guessed is that creating actions is the most important task of Stuff application development. Some actions simply fetch JSP while some actions involves the action classes. If you have noticed, our action class is a plain Java class which is not implementing or extending any interface or class. The only informal contract is to provide an execute method in the action class. And this method name is also configurable. We can configure the method to be invoked in the stuss.xml file in its action element which we already saw in our previous video. Now the class can have properties and they can be of any type. Now struts populates the request input parameters to the action class properties using their setter methods and it involves one interceptor called parameters. The input parameters coming in from the browser are all of string type. So if we have properties in some other type like int, float or date, then there has to be a conversion taking place from string to that type. And normally Struts does this for us automatically. Next requirement is that the action class must have a no argument constructor. If we have no constructor, then that's fine because Java will provide a no argument constructor for us. But if we have written some parameterized constructor then we must also provide a no argument constructor otherwise struts will not be able to instantiate that action class. Now there is one catch here the same action class can be associated with multiple actions I mean multiple action elements. In that case the action class should provide a different method for each of the action elements. Now the most important thing about the action class in Struts2 which is different from Struts1 is that the controller creates a new action instance for each and every HTTP request. So our action class does not have to be a thread safe. We can use the properties to store the request based data and it will not conflict or override the data of some other request. Each and every request will have a separate action object and this simplifies a lot of things which we couldn't do in Struts1. Now, as we already saw the action classes don't need to implement any interface or extend any class but Struts2 has provided action interface and action support class which we can use for our action class. Let's check the action interface first. Now, action interface has execute method which our action class has to implement if it is implementing action interface. So this forces us to provide an implementation for the execute method. Now if you want to invoke some other method from the action class then we need to provide implementation of that method and the implementation of the execute method also. So this is kind of overhead for us. Now the only benefit we gain by implementing action interface is there are constants available in the action interface for the written values which we can use instead of hard coding success like success here like this we can actually use a constant like this so this is a better way of coding and this constant is supplied by this interface so this is the only benefit we get and it forces us to implement this execute method and if we want to execute some other method, we need to impl provide the implementation of both the methods. So this is kind of overhead for us. And that's why we generally don't, don't prefer this implementing action interface. Now there is one more class called action support, which Stuss2 provides. And this is the default action class. In one of my previous videos, I had referred about this action class, about, about this action support class that if there is no action class matching for a particular action and if we don't provide any class for a particular action element then the action support class is instantiated as a default action class.
Now generally it's a good practice to extend from this class when writing our action classes. Since it implements the action interface, we can still use those constants for our return string. And this class provides an implementation of the execute method. So we can either override that execute method if we want or we can leave that also and we can provide a different method like hello. Now in addition to execute, there are other methods in action support that we can override and struts will call that method automatically for us. For example, it provides validate method which we can override for validating user input. We'll see how to validate the input parameters in our subsequent videos. It also provides get text methods to get the localized message messages from the properties file and is it is actually used in the context of inter internationalization and localization which we will discuss in some later videos. It provides the add field error method which we can use to add some error message corresponding to the field in the HTML page or form. So to conclude we can say that the best way of creating action class is by extending action support class and this is it for this video. We will see some more stuff of Stas2 in the next video. I hope it was helpful. Thanks for watching.